Hi, how's it going? Uh, just wanted to provide a bit of uh, information and maybe some help for doing your individual drawings for the wind powered vehicle. So I've been doing some sketching in my journal just to give you an idea of the kind of thing that um, I'm looking for and that you should be working towards. So it's not um, complete. I'll post a, another video when I've done a bit more, but I just wanted to show you where I'm up to. Um, so got my book here. Uh, so there's my concept sketches to start with. And this sketch here, uh, I'm not sure whether you, that looks difficult for you, but really all I've done is to follow the techniques that I showed you in, in class uh, on the video lectures and that the, the tutors showed you in the tutorials. So you can see overall it's a, a box drawn in isometric, just sketched freehand using the techni techniques I showed you. Uh, and then the wheels, you can see the back wheel here that I've done uh, an isometric square, put my cross lines in and then sketched in my isometric circle uh, or ellipse for the wheel. Uh, then at the front here, again for the turbine, I've just drawn uh, again a square in isometric then my circle and then just filled in a couple of blades so I can see what's going on. All right, uh, the other thing that I've done here with my sketch, concept sketch is to write some notes for myself. So one of my ideas is just that I want the shaft to be as high as possible so I can make the turbine as big as possible. Then uh, there's a few other things uh, that are noted there. Uh, I, need, I don't know what payload I'm gonna be able to carry so I've just said, okay, I'm gonna aim for at least the four kilo rectangular uh, weight to put on my um, vehicle. And I'm gonna allow a payload area for that and uh, allow for it to be stacked up. So here's an area that I've just indicated that might be able to be used for the payload. Uh, the other thing that as I was doing my concept sketch, so originally I had a shaft that goes all the way back and then that goes down to a pulley on the, on the rear uh, shaft here and then I thought well um, why do I need to do that maybe I can just have a, a string coming down into a pulley here and then back to um, my uh, large pulley on the back wheel and then it gives me a little bit more room to move for putting extra weights and so on so that's one of the reasons why we make you do drawings uh, and and you should as a designer do drawings like this because it forces you to think about your design and how you're going to do things uh, and it helps you to come up with different ideas so if I come over to this side so I've now started to think in detail about some of the uh, things that I'm trying to do here all right so uh, this is a what's this is a side view of the, the hub here this is the frame here's the shaft coming through here um, so I've got here some bearings on the front and the back um, and then I've got a string coming down here to a pulley and then that's gonna go back to that rear uh, pulley at the, the rear shaft here. And I've put some notes just to remind myself uh, of what I'm doing and to uh, record my thinking. So I've got here, I need to take care of the thrust load and the way I can do that is with this uh, washer here, sorry, not washer, this nut that we can use to lock the, the back of the hub. That can be acting against, or resting against the inner race of the bearing. Uh, and then so that will just, the, the bearings uh, radial, sorry, axial load capacity will take care of the thrust load um, and we get no friction generated due to that contact there. Uh, the other thing in, in drawing this detail, I right, put a pulley in here. Um, you know, I don't know what size this is going to be, but um, yeah, so you note, might note here that I've written uh, that there's I can get a pulley at Bunnings. So when I did this, I thought, oh, I haven't seen any of those and I haven't provided any. So I had a quick look at Bunnings website, just put in um, small pulley as a search and they came up with some pulleys here that might be useful for $2.80. Okay. Uh, the other thing is that having drawn this, uh, I can see that there might be some interference here that I need to take care of. What else have I got here? Um, so this is looking down from the top. Uh, so other thing that I've needed to make sure I do is to keep this as close to the bearings as possible to prevent be um, bending, too much bending in the shaft. And I must have the two bearings. You can't get away with just one. Right? Just one bearing here will not do the job. 
right, so let's see what else I've got here. Let's go over the page. Got some more detail here. So here I've started looking at wheel details. Okay, so here's my uh, frame dimensions. So the 25 mil tube. Um, and here I've got a bearing. Here's the um, cross section of the wheels that we'll provide. Here's a nut and I'm gonna use a, a M8 threaded rod. Uh, I've got, um, I think, a, a, maybe a, a eight mil washer in here, an M8 washer. Uh, I've indicated the bearing that I'm going to use and indicated a little bit about what's happening with the shaft here. So, then I've started to put on these dimensions so I can see uh, from the edge of the frame out to the end of the axle. I can start using this information when I go over here to my top view of the, the vehicle and I put it inside the box. So I've got the, the box dimensions up here. I've used different ones so you can't just copy. Right, so my box dimensions up here and uh, then I've started to put in the other dimensions. So over here you can see I've got um, a calculation where I've worked out based on these kinds of details here. Um, so I've left a, a gap or I've done a calculation so I can then start to adjust things. So as I was doing this I realised well I've left 20 mil here um, and I think we've got a 55 here. Uh, so half of this diameter is 50. So that's 70, so that leaves me only 15 here. So that's not enough. So I'm gonna have to go back and, and change this um, these dimensions. So I've done it in pen, just so you can see it. If I was doing it for my own design, I would do it in pencil so I can rub this out and adjust these dimensions. So this is the sort of thing that I'm wanting to, to see in your in your work. Okay, so what have I done here? So I've just gone a little bit further and just started looking at uh, the, uh, what's that? Uh, again, the hub in detail. And then I've started to, again, redraw my isometric view just to get a bit more detail and to start writing out my cut list. Okay, so my cut list is going to come from having done this properly. Okay, all right, so that's, seven and a half minutes, that's longer than I wanted this to be. Um, but hopefully that's a bit of a help for you and some guidance for doing your sketches. So let's have a quick look again at those. I know you're gonna stop the video and um, look at those in detail, so that's, then that's fine. But please don't just copy. Um, this is, you know, I've, I've done something that, you know, probably isn't gonna work all that great. Uh, just to give you an idea of the, the types of drawings. There's some good ideas in there and some other not so good ideas. All right, All right so that's it for now. Uh, hopefully that was helpful and um, enjoy your Easter and, and Stuvac break and I'll see you in a week or so. Bye for now.